So welcome back. Now I did explain that I went a little bit mad while out shopping with my mother and I couldn't resist these two gorgeous little rabbits. One in blue, one in pink. They matched perfectly with the eggs on the sticks. So I thought I would show you how you can use the same selection of flowers from the previous arrangement to make a completely different shaped arrangement. So my two little rabbits are going to sit really nicely here on the left side of my arrangement but for a minute they're just going to sit behind me and keep an eye on me while I'm working so we'll pop them here at the back there we are they can keep an eye on me check I'm doing a good job and I can explain to you how I've created the base of my design now this is a long melamine container I've used this for several different types of arrangements and I am using floral foam for this arrangement because I want to have more of a structure and a, a more formal placement with the flowers and it wouldn't work quite as well with wire mesh the container doesn't have a lot of depth to it so if I was only to use wire mesh, my design would probably be a lot lower. Uh, so inside I have some moss on one side and there, that's where my two rabbits are going to sit at the end. And I have some fork, they're not forks, I have some plastic frogs in the bottom there to hold my foam. Narrow foam, it will make it easier for me to cover the foam at the end. I won't have to have lots of foliage, greenery. I probably will just use moss to give that nice springtime look. But it gives me a chance to arrange on one side and then sit my two very cute little rabbits on this section here. Okay, now let's just think which is the best way for me to work. I'm right-handed, so I tend to like to work with my flowers and foliage on the left. Uh, so that's how I'm gonna start. And I'm reusing the willow. It's the same willow from the previous design. And I'm going to bring this in on the left-hand side of the arrangement. So it's going to be very asymmetrical, almost like um, a garden, sort of, almost like a tree would be to one side of the garden. So that's gonna give me some lovely height on one side. And I'm quite far over into the foam. You need to be fairly deep to counterbalance the weight of those willow stems at the top. And then I can start introducing some of the flowers. I still have the gorgeous blossom and I'm guessing that this is cherry blossom. And the only reason I'm guessing, well, the main reason I'm guessing is because I don't know what blossom it is. But this is just outside the window here on my left hand side. And during the autumn, I'm not familiar with the tree having any apples on it. I'm assuming that it's cherry blossom and that the birds have beaten us to it and eaten all the cherries. But somebody that's more knowledgeable about their varieties of blossom might be able to tell me differently. And I'm going to, to group them together on the one side. Lovely colour, beautiful texture, it's a really pretty tree and I am very envious of anybody that has blossom in their garden. Although on the negative side we've had some high winds the last couple of days and it makes a terrible mess but we've got that grouped structure on the one side almost like two trees would be placed into the garden. The weight of this will be counterbalanced by those two rabbits towards the end but I'm going to keep on going and we'll see if we can use all of the flowers that, or at least all of the varieties of flowers. I might not use the same quantity, but I'm thinking in a garden there would be a selection of the delphinium in your herbaceous border. It would grow up from its own part within the garden. And that's something that I'm trying to replicate here. If you don't have delphinium, again, look for that tall linear flower. It could be irises could be stock this time of the year but ideally something tall and thin and what we refer to as a linear flower so this again would be another version of a parallel arrangement if you look at the placement at the bottom you'll see that all my stems are positioned in parallel groups they're not radiating out from the center point and sometimes it can be quite confusing because as British flower arrangers, we're often taught that there is only one style of parallel arrangement and there's not. There's several versions and the design can look very different from different parts of the world. And if you're learning to be a florist, flower arranger, or whether you're just doing it for some personal enjoyment, 
I would suggest looking through some books and magazines, looking on the internet, popping out to your library, so that you can get a real idea of how many different versions and styles there are of different designs. Now one thing I do have to be careful about in this arrangement is the weight. I've only got a small piece of floral foam and I don't want the design to tip forward, so I really need to consider bringing some weight down to the base of the arrangement. And I can achieve that with the smaller pieces of the blossom. I'll still place them in in that parallel form, but because there's a bit of curve there in the shape, that will help give me some weight to the back. And it will also help create depth. It'll bring my eye backwards through the design and prevent that arrangement being too flat. In the previous arrangement, I used the little eggs on the plastic sticks quite tall, but what I'm gonna do this time is to cut them much shorter and place them down low in the foam. It's gonna give me a different texture, a different shape there at the base, and it's gonna bring a little bit of visual weight down to the bottom so that the design doesn't become too top heavy and there is some interest in material at the base as well as at the top. So a little cluster there of the eggs. Now I think I'll look at using the blue irises. And because I've got a group of blue here on what is my right hand side, I think I'll bring some more of the blue iris. Or is it purple iris? Have you joined the debate on the iris? I think it's blue, but my Wednesday night students insist it's purple. Personally, I think they're all wrong and I'm right. But for me, an iris is definitely blue. It has that very vibrant yellow center. I'm gonna bring some towards the back again so that we've got weight at the back. But picture that herbaceous border, picture your bulbs coming up in the garden. And normally they're in clusters and they're growing in those very straight parallel sort of formation. So keep on going here. I'm using the more open iris towards the base and remember to leave a bit of space between them so when they do open, there's room for that flower head to expand and to grow. And I've got one more here, which is a bit shorter, so that can pop in at the back as well. Now, I would probably say this design is front facing. It's great for a windowsill or a mantelpiece even. And you can really play around with all the different types of flowers and foliages that are available at the moment. Now I think we'll start with this very soft pastel pink rose. I'll keep it quite tall because that's how it was used in the previous arrangement. I've got four and what I'm going to do is stagger the heights down so, so it gives me some height but it also brings my eye all the way down to the bottom as well. And my plan at the moment is to take this arrangement apart and to create something else with it as well. So you can really see how versatile those flowers are. Now, as I add more flowers, those parallel placements become a lot more clearer. And if you can only get hold of one or two types of flowers, or you've only got the blossom, then just think about how you can arrange the minimal quantity of flowers you have. You don't have to have this vast quantity of flowers, the same as me. Now we can introduce the lovely gerbra. It's a very soft, creamy white. And I've got some creamy colors there in my eggs. So I'm gonna repeat that color on the opposite side with the gerbra. Now these have more movement in it, but you can still use them in a parallel arrangement. You just need to try and get the base of the flower in in that parallel format. Now, if you struggle with a lot of the terminology and the words that I use through the videos, then please put them in the description box below. If you want me to give you a better description of some of the techniques and the methods I use, then please do so because I've got some videos planned where I talk more about the elements and principles of design and I help people solve problems rather than teach you how to make an arrangement. So any questions, anything you don't understand, then please pop it in the description box below and I can answer it in a future video. In the video beforehand, I also had some very pretty, sweet, scented narcissi. And of course I'm Welsh, so it's lovely to be able to use my national flower in a design as well. And I'm almost running out of foam, but what I think I will do is put a second group just tucked in, in amongst the gerbera. It will give me a nice contrast in shape and texture. And in the previous video, I mentioned that you can help support 
the very soft stem, the hollow stem of the narcissi and the daffodils by inserting a small wire internally at the base or a cocktail stick or a kebab stick works just as well. I'm very close to the end of my foam here so only a tiny gap to fit those in and I always think that a parallel arrangement of this format really suits a long narrow container. Now that's all the flowers that I had in the previous arrangement so you can see a complete contrast in shape and a variety of using the different types of flowers. I've cut down the little eggs so they're much shorter on that plastic stem and I'm going to insert them down really low to help again bring that colour all the way across from one side to the other. Try not to make it really symmetrical because nature isn't symmetrical, it's not visually balanced. So it doesn't matter if there's slightly more eggs or a bigger display of eggs on one side than there is on the other. I've just noticed that I have a blue delphinium there that hasn't been used so that can pop there in the back. Just to finish off I'm going to introduce some more of the moss just at the base so that I help cover my mechanics so I get rid of that unsightly floral foam and if you're not too keen on the floral foam then that is perfectly understandable and there are many many videos on my youtube channel which will show you some different ideas on how to arrange the flowers in a more sustainable way and the next video that's going to come in this series of easter arrangement is going to be an arrangement arranged in wire mesh so you'll need to either come back and watch it at another time or grab your lunch pour some wine and sit back and watch all three videos in one go so the moss now is continued all the way through the arrangement from one side to the other and all i need to do now is to bring back mr and mrs bunny and sit them there quite comfortably on that section of moss so here they are Mr and Mrs Bunny or brother and sister Bunny who knows okay so we've got some blue eggs here at the base so I'm thinking that Mr Bunny would look better further away from the colour blue and then we can introduce the pink rabbit just behind that blue egg so that we get a contrast there in colour and texture. She's been out on an Easter egg hunt because she's got a basket full of her own Easter eggs so that we don't get that really solid line. But what do we think? Gorgeous springtime arrangement. Exactly the same material as used in the previous design but with the addition of Mr and Mrs Rabbit. And I hope you'll stick by for the next tutorial. Don't forget to comment in the box below. Let me know if my irises are blue or purple. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And I look forward to seeing you for the next tutorial. So goodbye for now.